welcome to the Road to Dracula Visions Artist Spotlight. Six days away, Sam. Six we are prepared away. for launch. We're ready to go. <laughs> We're almost there. We are so excited. Woo! We've got all the we've got all the rewards lined up. We've got them locked down. We cannot wait to show them to you. Already, uh, things are getting teased. I, I believe uh, in the last day or two, we uh, showed off the uh, Sam Agro inspired uh, bus statue that you. Uh, printed and uh, painted based on Amanda Daly's uh, 3D sculpt. Absolutely. Um, and if you haven't, uh, you really should uh, head over to Slam Press Tomes on Facebook. Uh, click the little uh, button on the top, put your e email address in there, and we've been sending out a newsletter uh, also giving some behind-the-scenes information on uh, the upcoming Kickstarter, which is launching on October 4th. Uh, we also have links on there uh, because we do have the pre-launch page up. So you will want, if you're, especially if you're interested, you'll want to be one of the first people on as we go to launch. Uh, in particular, I'll give you a little teaser. You want to be the, at least the first 50 people on there uh, For, as we go to launch. There's some great, uh, we're not calling it the early bird, we're calling it the early bat. Absolutely. And today we have an authentic Transylvanian in the house. We do, we do. We, so today we have a cover artist, a writer, an illustrator. I'm just going to bring him on here. And we also have the author of the best-selling book, I used to be indecisive. Now I'm not sure. Mr. <laughs> Kalman Androsovsky. How are you, Kalman? That sounds exactly like me. I feel like I'm <laughs> told with that. <laughs> That's why it's a bestseller. It, it comes from the soul. The universal uh, experience, particularly for us creative types. <laughs> So as per usual, uh, I'm gonna pop up a few pieces of art uh, so that people, can, if if they if it's they even a vampire uh, in that one exactly yeah it's it's almost like I planned it um, <laughs> um, yeah so what I what I do is I put some art in, in case uh, people are are new to your your style and your type of art uh, we could give a little flavor of what they're gonna see in Dracula Visions um, Sam's gonna ask you a few. Uh, uh, 
reasonable, uh, proper questions, and then later on, I'm going to ask you some nonsense. Well, let's so, see. Uh, Dan's uh, going <laughs> to ask two questions, and then we're going to ram. I'm going to ramble for a whole <laughs> uh, Sam and I have proven that we can really talk when. We, yeah, this we this is talk. true. So, and and this we get is... to all the questions because, as well, you see, I've already interrupted. This is uh, <laughs> definitely a taste of things to come. Well, this is kind of the because because you and I are technically studio mates, and in fact, you were one of the uh, when I first arrived at the studio, you were one of the people I knew a, a little better than the others. Yet we we haven't really had a chance to uh, talk about uh, antiquing and uh, picking and uh, uh, vintage stuff like we normally do. It's true. In addition to being creative, Sam and I are both uh, vintage pickers of various various treasures, various types of things. <laughs> And uh, and our childhood sweet spots line up, so we like we have the oh, same absolutely. foundational nerd influences, so we can <laughs> certainly get going about that too. Yeah, I've been hiding in my coffin here, uh, not coming to the <laughs> studio because because of you know COVID and stuff. The plague. Now, after eighteen months, I've kind of this feels like the real workspace, and going mm -hmm. there means I have to spend three days kind of cleaning up and reorganizing before I can do anything. Not entirely possible when you're under deadlines. So <laughs> of course, of course. Moment, now I'm kind of, uh, kind of entrenched here in, in the home nerd cave. Well, I wasn't kidding when we said uh, that you are, are in authentic Transylvania. So uh, you are, uh, just to avoid any, any uh, uh, I guess, accusations of cultural appropriation, uh, we have Kalman. <laughs> it's who, you guys who are culturally appropriating. Well, this no, no, but now that we have you, we, 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 we bring you out. We fixed it. You are, th there's a reason why you're the, you're the, I'm the final token Transylvanian to make this tank. Gets plus, plus this light is making me look like a vampire. I'm like glowing right now. So. <laughs> Close you're, enough. you're the final interview before the Kickstarter starts. Now yep. tell us, uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of fascinated. Uh, what is your connection to uh, Transylvania? So my mother was born in Transylvania and my father's father was born in Transylvania. Very Trans cool. Yeah, Transylvania is a region that is politically uh, part of Romania mm -hmm. and has been since World War II. Actually, since World War I, I think, and then it shifted around in World War II back to Romania. But ethnically, uh, it's majority Hungarian and was mm -hmm. part of Hungary before World War I and, and the Treaty of Triana. Um, so my family are Hungarians, Hungarian-speaking, culturally Hungarian, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but geographically, Transylvania is part of Romania. So they were kind of an ethnic minority in their own land because of uh, changing borders and war treaties and stuff like that. So my mom was born there and grew up there. And uh, yeah, my father was born in Budapest in Hungary, but his, uh, his father is from there. So both sides, both sides Transylvanian. And have you been to the region to, to visit your, your I guess, uh, ancestral land? Wouldn't that be Transylvania? awesome? Uh, I have been to Hungary. Oh, okay. But not specifically never, Transylvania. I've never been to Transylvania. Huh. Uh, the thing that makes this sort of, um, I don't know, an added wrinkle is that Hungarians and Romanians hate each other's guts and <laughs> have been fighting and trying to step on each other for hundreds and hundreds of years. Ah. So um, Transylvania is part of Hungary. Everyone's good. Transylvania is suddenly part of Romania. Suddenly not so good. Not, mm -hmm. not very good for the Hungarians there. Um, so a lot of tension, you know, you know, it's Europe. Yeah. Everybody yeah. hates everybody. Everybody thinks that they're the only valid culture and everyone else's should be beneath their boot heels. And so I've... that's, uh, that's the Transylvanian pedigree one day, maybe I'll go back. I'm planning a trip. Uh, once the world settles, I've, I've got some family, family business to do back in the old country. And, mm -hmm. uh, maybe finally it'll be time for me to actually go to, Dracula Ground Zero. I was just imagining that there might have been there. There might be I, there. There obviously is uh, some sort of uh, vampire Dracula cottage tourist industry there. Oh, there I, certainly is. There is a castle sure. Dracula. Yeah, it's not really Vlad's castle. Um, it's somewhere else. It's a different castle, but it's appropriately spooky. Mm -hmm. um, and and Vlad, you know, Vlad was real. Uh, Vlad was actually mm -hmm. Wallachian, not Transylvanian. The Transylvania of it all kind of got woven in later. 
Yeah. Now, would that castle be the one? Because in uh, uh, I was just reading Dacker Stoker's introduction to Dracula Visions, and he mentioned uh, there were some sketches of a castle that uh, Stoker, again, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, having having just read the, the introduction, that uh, these might have been uh, sketches that uh, uh, Stoker himself did of a castle that inspired uh uh, Dracula, the novel. So perhaps I, I, this I, is it. I have no idea if that's connected. Uh, I, all I know is the reason it's a tourist attraction is because of the novel. So mm -hmm. this, well, this, came, this came after the fact. Whether they picked it because it had some more direct connection to the inspiration, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something to ask Dacker, I guess, when we have him on the live stream. But this is about Kalman. Kalman, how did you get your start in the, the comics industry? Uh, stubbornness and uh, unwillingness to imagine a life where I was doing anything else. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm old. I've been, I've been banging around, uh, you know, being a creative uh, and a freelance illustrator for a long time. So when I started, uh, there was no internet, uh, not unless you were a politician or a university student. I would, uh, I would photocopy uh, samples of my artwork and mail them to people to try and get work. And the first uh, freelance jobs that I got were in uh, role-playing games, pen and paper RPGs, yes. which, uh, you know, to my teenage self were comics, role-playing games. It was all, it was all part of the same good nerd soup. Mm -hmm. um, so my very first gig was doing illustrations for Iron Crown Enterprises, who published the Middle Earth uh, Lord of the Rings role-playing games. And from there, I got some work at Caliber, doing some King Arthur comics, um, but the the big the big sort of thing that changed everything was getting in with Wizards of the Coast and working on Dungeons and Dragons and then eventually Star Wars and a little bit of Vampire. Hey, vampires again! <laughs> there we go. Some fangs. There we go. Um, throw the fang sign. Um, I don't know why the thumb is in there. That's yeah. like the fang with an ear. That's, that's the tongue. tongue. I don't know. Yeah, that's the tongue. <laughs> Um, and then, and then once I was, that was, by that time I was kind of regularly working, um, and working by day doing character design for video games. And then, uh, I just kept sending stuff to Marvel people that I would meet. Again, you had to fly to a convention. You had to talk to humans because barely anyone had email yet. I was still, uh, running to FedEx to make the deadline to send them, uh, send them the art. Although, uh, it was this sort of liminal sort of transition point where I wasn't actually mailing the art, I was scanning the art, burning it onto a CD, and then mailing them the CD. Um, but I remember wow. many hectic, manic bike rides to the FedEx Depot, which was like the last point on the chain so that I could, <laughs> I could, I could, I could have it to 7.15 instead of 5.30, you know, to get it out on the Friday. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and they got a little work at DC, uh, doing uh, some Legion of Superheroes and a uh, creator on comic with Abnett and Landing called Eye Candy. Uh, did a little Vampirella. My first cover ever was uh, Vampy Number Three, uh, the mini series. That's a manga. Version the, of yeah, the Kevin oh. Kevin Lau created uh, uh -huh. that version, right? The vampires again. I can't escape them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I started getting more cover work from DC. And after kicking at the can many, many times, I got a gig at Marvel doing a Satana short story. Uh, and then I did the second volume of NYX, which was the sort of Josh Middleton, Joe Casada, right. it's in the city kind of story. I've always been a more of a kind of urban setting. Mm -hmm. real people in real clothes i mean i like superheroes i like fantasy i like monsters i like all of that but and was that the run that x23 first came into prominence no no x23 okay. was Wrong. already kind of in the x-men by then oh okay yeah so i did i'll continue doing D, D art continue doing comics and uh it's you know from there uh started doing book covers some magazine work a little more video games some concept art some toys mm -hmm. it's being a freelance creative is kind of like uh, being uh, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins. <laughs> Not the, I don't know about the remake, I, with the sequel no one needed. I'm talking about classic Mary mm. Poppins. You know, one day you're doing uh, <laughs> on lines, me. one day you're a chimney sweep. There you That's go. kind of the joy of the freelance. That's right. Do you have a preference in terms of the all, all your different gigs in terms of like video design? Or do you like the variety? That I like it gives the variety. You? I like the surprise. Um, I've learned 
been at this long enough that I've learned that any one thing uh, over time that doesn't change starts to feel like prison. So I like the surprise <laughs> and I like the novelty and I like the new, and that's kind of the spice in the soup that makes it feel playful. Mm -hmm. And that's important because all, all you really have in this biz to sell is joy. If the process becomes joyless, doesn't matter how perfectly you're rendering those rippling abs or, or the, <laughs> the, 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 the shadows on the cape, no one's buying what you're selling. It's got to be joyful. Mm -hmm. So variety is a part of that. Games, comics, magazines, RPGs, all of it. It's all fun and a nice, nice combination uh, keeps it uh, joyful. And jumping to the thing you're you're probably best known for uh, these days, uh, this is how you and I met. Uh, I was producing the uh, official Captain Canuck action figure and actually prototyped uh, a few of the uh, new version of the the modern Captain Canuck, which you developed and designed. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, taking an icon and reinventing it? Yeah, that was a, a few years ago. Um, I kind of stumbled into what I thought was just a design gig. Um, it turned out to be <laughs> Captain Canuck. Uh, if you're Canadian, you may know Captain Canuck. If you're not Canadian, you probably don't. But and he's a kind of a Canadian superhero cottage industry unto himself. Mm -hmm. Canada has on and off had their own sort of streams of comic book culture. And Captain Canuck was... Uh, developed in the 70s he actually captain canuck and i were both created in the same year so you know maybe it was his met that we would uh, we would cross paths and uh i thought it was just a design gig but it kind of turned into more it turned into an animated uh series of shorts and was this your I, first writing gig as well like yeah, major yeah, writing gig uh, the outgrowth of that after doing redesigning this character that hadn't really been revisited since the 70s um, I ended up uh, getting the gig to write the comics. So they wanted to do a comic series as a spinoff from the, the animated shorts we were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that kind of became the dominant thing. So I rebooted and rewrote what I, I was thinking of it kind of in my head as Ultimate Captain Canuck, kind of a, a reboot and a reapproach, trying to keep uh, the tent poles of the idea, but make it feel uh, modern. There was a bit of a quaint old timiness to Canuck, <laughs> which is charming and part of what makes it good. But we wanted mm -hmm. to make our take different. That ended up spinning out into a small shared universe of yep. public domain <laughs> and Canadian properties. Um, after writing, uh, drawing a couple of issues, doing the covers, uh, I kind of was the architect of that universe and incubated a bunch of the other properties and kind of wove them all together into this bigger story called the Chapterverse, which was a uh, was a ton of fun and a creative thrill mm -hmm. working with amazing creators you know one thing there's a lot that can be said about that chapter and what it was like but one thing that is unassailable is the amazing creative uh, talent that i got to work with on on those books like leonard kirk and andrew wheeler and jim zub and ray fox yeah and i i'm forgetting millions of people but um it was it was a it was a chance for me to really show the world the talent we have hidden in Canada, because there's a lot of secret Canadians uh, throughout the comic book industry, uh, writers, artists, creatives of all stripes. And part of the mandate for that line was to, at least for the first year or two, keep it Canadian. And uh, and it was fun to just mine my Rolodex after 15 years in the industry and kind of call up friends and, and, and colleagues and people I respected to participate. I mean, we had Carrie Nord, we had Fiona Staples, we had Lo I if I had prepared the list, I could name it's them all. Okay. I'm forgetting far more than I'm <laughs> name checking, but um, that was the good part of that mm -hmm. experience. Um, cool. I haven't really worked with them in uh, in some time, but I'm still very happy to hang my hat on taking this Canadian icon, reinventing, rebooting him, and uh, and the feedback was very positive. I wasn't sure. People sometimes don't like it when you put chocolate in their peanut butter or change the thing they loved <laughs> as a kid, mm -hmm. but um, it was very validating. Oh, never, never. Very, well, the, <laughs> very, very, the fact that the the design you, I think it all came down to the fact that the design you came up with was uh, so phenomenal. And my big, one of my big regrets was we were never able to uh, take the modern Canuck into a factory produced figure. I think that would have been amazing. As well, we were- Here's, here's of... a little taste, actually. I'm trying to line this up. This is a custom Captain Canuck figure based on my costume design oh, that Jason cool. Liu uh, produced. He produced a very limited run of these. The creator of the uh, Pitiful Human Lizard, artist of uh, Afterlift, 
And yeah, there he is on the cover. There he is. This was a this was a birthday present Jason gave me uh, on my fortieth, and uh, uh, this is you know this is a crown jewel in my personal collection. And yeah, there he is on the screen too. Nice. Wow. And we were also uh, playing with a few of the other characters too. The female blue fox, in particular, I I was really happy with. But uh, anyways, it's a shame we never got to see those. I'm sure they would have been awesome. Sam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was great. So what 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 have you been up to lately? What are what are your latest uh, projects? I'm working on uh, again the Dick Van Dyke uh, of it all. <laughs> um, I'm uh, there's a new Kickstarter that launched today for a uh, psych PG Psycho Gorman inspired Psycho Gorman. anthology based on uh, the cult uh, film shot yeah. uh, shot in Toronto, I believe. Based on uh, the in in Niagara, I think. It's like oh, in okay. Here. In yeah, Southern yeah, Ontario. Southern Ontario. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a uh, indie kids horror sci-fi <laughs> kind of unclassifiable. If yeah, it's mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't say it's really kids, but there are kids in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Although, although yeah. it's arguable that at least one of those kids is a sociopath. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. It is an extravaganza of gore and horror, and uh, so funny. Um, check it out; it's on Shutter. Um, but we're doing like a kind of like a it's, it's as if it was an issue of heavy metal short mm -hmm. stories long stories pinups all sorts of things like that uh, uh, comics format. magazine format it is a comics magazine format sam is involved as well in uh, in shepherding this uh so i'm doing a piece for that which i am super excited about i can give a little sneak peek oh uh, yes i'm please. kind of ever since lockdown i've been kind of getting back to the joy of making things with my hands i've been digital for almost 10 years before that and uh what's happening with my hair um so <laughs> I'm kind of, i've got this process now where i kind of hand draw and scan in and do a combo of digital and hand right. done the piece i'm doing for this uh vampire thing is similar so this is the one of the elements that are going into oh, this one track me, uh, nice boom that uh, is so great oh yeah that's yeah, the you wow itself. you captured them uh, the hunky boy, the Archduke of Nightmares, PG. Um, <laughs> the final piece, this is only one piece of it. There's other components that are going in. So I can show this without really spoiling uh, the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. um, although I did this little, uh, I did this little bio cop for fun. This is also a character from uh, the that I kind of worked into. To the piece. Nice. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah, super happy to be a part of that. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, well, the first launched cover on, you were launched showing? on kick launched on Kickstarter today. I think that when just before the show started, they were at twenty two uh, thousand Canadian, and uh, I think they're like five or six grand from their twenty eight grand uh, Very close total to their goal. Oh, wow. yeah, I saw that. It is head awesome. over. Yeah. That's Head crazy. over and pledge. Uh, uh, Kyle Hotz is involved. Paul Pope is involved. And of course, the Lethal Comics guys of uh, Kerry Nord, Carl Kirschel, and Andy Belanger. So. Yeah, there's a holy trinity of talent right there, I'll tell you. Never mind all the rest of us. Those guys As, alone. Yeah, no. Uh, also, uh, Jay Bone has this delightful take oh, on the yes, characters. Yes, that's right. I can't and and he's, he's got stickers. He, yeah, his so his are the giveaway stickers, right? If you ever wondered what Psycho Gorman, the animated series, would look like. <laughs> yeah, something nobody thought they wanted, but everybody needs. <laughs> uh, so I'm doing that. Uh, the first uh, black and white art you put up is a mini series called uh, Midnight Western Theater. It is goth vampire cowboys. Again, something that everybody needs, but no one knew they wanted. Uh, the final <laughs> issue comes out, I think, this week. Um, it was cool. a great joy to do a cover run. I haven't done one of those in a while. Um, cool. What else? I know there's more. Um, I'm working on a top secret comics project right now that I can't talk about. It's my first sequentials in about a year. And, uh, oh, I did a movie poster. Uh, again, I'm going to show you the hand painted component. Uh, cause, cause I'm not sure I can share the final. This is, uh, it's called he murdered sleep. It's a cyberpunk reinterpretation of Macbeth. Oh, dude. It's a oh. Canadian sci-fi short, and I'm super uh, delighted to be asked to do this. I love wow. Shakespeare. I love cyberpunk. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, I think... Uh, I, haven't, I haven't posted the piece yet, but the poster is out and circulated. So, Box and Films, you find them on Instagram, or just, uh, just Google uh, He Murdered Sleep Film. It's got some great Canadian talent in it. Uh, 
the actress who plays uh, Pastor Nina on Kim's Convenience. Oh, is Baby uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, and Sean Doyle is is the man himself. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was uh, super fun. My first film poster. Very excited about that. Again, new a new a new aspect to the Dick Van Dyke thing. What else have I been doing? It's all a blur. Oh, I did a, I did a Murdoch Mysteries ARG game. I did all the characters <laughs> and illustrations for that. It's kind of a phone game where you solve mysteries with Murdoch. Oh, okay. Yeah, lots yeah. of characters, lots of headshots. Uh, that should be out uh, along with the new season, as far as I know. I haven't gotten 100% confirmation, but when I handed it in uh, earlier this year, they said September. So if you're a Murdoch Mysteries fan, or maybe your aunt or your mom is, uh, have them look for that. Very good. Yeah. Terrific. Very good. All Over right. You, I think it's time. <laughs> Are you ready for this, Calman? Yeah, man. Have you seen this show before? Yeah, of course. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So I I will warn you. Um it's this is Sam's fault because every time I do this, he keeps saying I, I keep going very easy on people. Um <laughs> and because this is the last one. Uh, we have to make sure that we we uh, we we send it off right. So, so I which... am the lucky recipient. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> he was thinking I want very easy with people. I thought I thought I ranked I, I when we went Ramones. I thought I I brought it up a little a couple. Well, no, uh, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna sexually shame Ramon. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> like, you went you went very sexual as opposed as as Ramon said. Uh, what would have horrified him were if you asked questions like, "Would you rather you know uh, uh, wade into like a river of shit?" That that that, that would have been. As long as we uh, don't play Never Have I Ever, I think we'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so disclaimers are there. Uh, all right, so would you rather? This is the 10 questions handpicked uh, by yours truly to determine your psychological profile, uh, AKA what I call the process. So, <laughs> number one, would you rather? And think about this one carefully. Um, would you rather never get tired or never have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> Well, listen, I'm a freelance illustrator. I'm always <laughs> tired. Uh, also having ADHD, I tend to work best once the sun goes down. So there's a lot of late nights and a lot of just grabbing the, the beast by the mane and riding it when it's when it's running. And if it's running from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m., that's, that's when it's happening. So as somebody who is perpetually tired, but also somebody who doesn't drink enough water and therefore rarely goes to the bathroom. <laughs> I definitely pick never get tired. Okay. I would probably so it's... double my output speed and uh, actually hit uh, more deadlines if I need that. Yeah. So it's it's quality time versus extra time mm. in that one. Okay. So um, here it ramps up. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two. <laughs> we're we're going to take it to 11 on number two. All right. Would you rather wake up and find out? all of your teeth have been replaced with pubic hairs or all your pubic hairs have been replaced with teeth. <laughs> okay. Supplemental question. <laughs> I need, I need, I need more clarity before I can answer. This. Is it one pubic hair per tooth? Yes. Or is it a tooth sized tooth density cluster of pubic hair? in place of each tooth. It is a proper tooth <laughs> size cluster. Okay. So are is the hair matted and fused enough that I could still chew? Uh, given the uh, texture, or probably is it just not. Like a it's, you're you're <laughs> pretty much gumming. What I'm gumming at this eat. point. And as a matter of fact, you might be like gagging on, on the hairs. <laughs> Calman, thank you for yes ending uh, mm, Martin always. there. Uh, well, I think it's got to be pubic hair, teeth instead of pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird male variant of vagina dentata. It's, uh, I don't know. Phallus dentata. That's a new one. We created something new. Let's work Excellent. this into some horror, Excellent. horror graphic novel. Yes, yes, that's a freebie. A ring of um, teeth around my dick. Let's do that. <laughs> Martin, well done, sir. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, we're we're gonna take it back a little. All right, so would you <laughs> would you rather would you rather grow a ponytail down to your ankles, 
or I feel like I'm have halfway a, there already thanks to Coach. Have, have a huge Adam's apple. Ponytail to ankles. Easy. Easy? Yeah. Define huge Adam's apple though. Uh, like dimensions or yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, like, think you of it like have an unsightly Adam's apple, but would it be like a, a co joined twin of Adam's apple? Oh, I was thinking more saying? like about the size of an apple. Oh, okay, <laughs> there you go. Uh, definitely ponytail, that's manageable. Ponytail, okay. Would you rather have a hundred roaches in your pants or have them in your hair? Hair, hair, okay, okay, that was easy. Would yeah. you have a would you rather have a tail or two horns? <laughs> tail. A tail. That can be, that can be disguised. <laughs> I, could, I could still pass with a tail. I could just <laughs> it's it's a baggy pants. <laughs> horns, horns are a little harder to cover up. Would, would you rather would you rather have a cat scratch your face or scratch your genitals? Uh, does face uh, can, does that include eyes? Yes, well, good. <laughs> good. It could. Because if it was face but not eyes, the answer would be face. Okay. Face and well, eyes, or specifically we, eyes, that's a toughie. We cannot automatically omit the eyes. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I like this that this one has stumped Calvin. <laughs> We've broken him at number five. How many no, scratches? Six. Sorry? How many scratches? A significant scratch. Um, one big one? Like a... uh, we'll give one big one. Yeah. Like, one big one. A yeah. swipe. A significant. Swipe. Like it breaks skin. Now, is that certain to get the eye? Or are we just not, not, not certain? Eye, so you have a, it's, you... it's anybody's guess. It's yeah. Possible. Yeah. It's not certain. Yeah. It's random. It's a, it's a cat. I think face. Face. Okay. All right. I was hoping we were going to have our, our, our pull quote there, Sam, but <laughs> <laughs> for the Dracula book. But it's right. <laughs> I think we all had have a cat scratch my genitals. Yeah, that I would... think the pubic hair teeth already won the pull quote. Yeah. Oh, hey. Yeah, I'd rather have pubic hair teeth. That'll go on the cover. All right. Um, Kelman, <laughs> uh, would you rather be hairy all over or be covered in feathers all over? Harry, mm, Harry, yeah. Okay. There's technology right. that can help with that, and also, <laughs> you know, you can also still kind of pass. There are hairy people in the world. Yeah. Okay. All right. Feathers like we're talking, we're talking yeah. like Bigfoot Harry. Yeah. 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 There, okay. there are people like that in the world too. I'm, I'm um, catching I mean, the, the feathers all over enabled me to fly. In which case, I might have to rethink. Well, I mean, you could try. <laughs> <laughs> the, the theme I'm the theme I'm catching here from Kalman is it's important for him to pass as normal. Hmm. Well, we all have to live in the world. I mean, I guess this is true. I guess in this post-COVID society, though, I'm, this is true. It's rather true. than we letting, haven't left my house much in the last year. Rather than let, letting I your devil devil horns fly or your feather your feathered uh, body, well, well, maybe this fly. One, this one has nothing to do with looks. This is uh, would you rather drink milk? That smells weird, or that looks weird. Ooh, well, <laughs> I can actually give you examples from life. <laughs> oh! I have discovered occasionally, being a you know back in my bachelor days, not so not so up on what's happening in the fridge all the time. Um, milk and or cream can have chunky bits, but still yeah. be okay. Yeah, still taste fine. Uh, but once it smells, it's undrinkable, no matter how it looks. So the okay. smell test is king. I would definitely uh, drink weird milk. Drink milk that looks weird before I would drink milk. That so blue weird. milk, good. Green milk. Yeah. Fuzzy milk. All good. Okay. All right. Uh, would you rather get pepper in your eyes or up your nose? I don't know. Probably... I don't care. That's fine. I cook with a lot of pepper. Like my my default reply when a waiter comes with the pepper mill is keep it coming until I sneeze. So either one is fine. No fear. Like, yeah. No wow. fear. No fear. Both. Boom. Nothing. All right. Last one before we get to the final question. Um, <clears throat> would you rather poop in the only toilet at a party? knowing that you're going to clog it <laughs> or 
poop in the bushes in the backyard. I feel like I've <laughs> probably done this one too. Um... <laughs> uh... If you've witnessed this, uh, people that are watching, please put it in the comments. Pick yeah, pictures I'm, preferred. I'm not, I, I, would, I would just let her rip in the toilet. And ah, no, oh, boy. I would really know for sure. Let's go. Who was responsible? Let's go. That's true. And, uh, That's and, true. and once I once I once it's, once I've done it and it's clogged, I don't need it anymore. It's other people's. Problem. <laughs> That's they can't true. Use it, right. That's true. Very good. All right. All right. Well done. Well done. All right. Final question for you, Calman. Uh, what is your favorite version of Dracula? Okay. Uh, I am going to go with uh, a ringer choice. And I'm not even, I don't remember the movie perfectly well. So it may actually not be Dracula, although I think it is. There is a 1974 film that has come out under two different titles. Um, it's, it's known both as Old Dracula and Vampira. And it stars oh. David Niven as Dracula. Oh, really? And You're... David Niven is pretty great. But he's overshadowed by the gorgeous and statuesque Teresa Graves, who is his, uh, his consort, uh, ah. Vampira in this. So David Niven Dracula is awesome, but uh, Teresa Graves, who is a beautiful African goddess, kind of in the Cleopatra Jones, Grace Jones kind of vein, uh, looking fabulous in amazing retro 70s attire. Uh, the two of them together really make that movie uh, my, uh, my deep cut. Wow, that is a deep fate. cut. Thank you for that gift. We are, yeah, we are headed I'm, to the I'm internet. I'm looking it up right now, actually. Old Dracula. There it is. Vampira. Can you yeah, bring it, it up on the screen, under, Martin? It comes under uh, Old Dracula uh, as a comedy horror. Yep. Yeah, I'll, I'll shoot up the screen here. Share, share screen, because I am anxious to see this, this gem. Screen. I just got the IMDb here. One sec. Do, do, do. Bam. There it is. Old Dracula. Oh, nice. Very good. Has this been dropped in our uh, backstage discussion group? I think this this could be never. A, I haven't even favorite. heard of this. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like this. All this right. Over well. Just amongst... like a Transylvanian to drop the knowledge. Yeah, 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 for sure. A vintage loving Transylvanian, no less. <laughs> we knew we knew going out with Kalman. Uh, I think eighty or ninety percent of the the creators so far have picked uh, the Gary Oldman Francis Ford Coppola Dracula. So yep. we knew we would get it be getting oh, a gem today. <laughs> You're talking right now. Come on. Wow. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great, but. Let's let's add some variety. Let's yeah. uh, let's surprise. <laughs> let's delight. Let's confound. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you, Calvin, for being on this uh, on this show. And uh, I cannot wait to see your uh, version of Dracula. Um, we are launching in six days. So mm -hmm. stay tuned for that. We'll have lots of other sneak peeks coming out. So um, and thank you once again, Sam, uh, for asking all of the relevant questions. I just wanted to <laughs> thank you, Martin, for uh, allowing me to hang out for the I guess this is officially season one of the wrap of uh, Season Dracula, one. Vision's, uh, <laughs> Dracula Vision's Spotlight. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, next next year, a whole new project and a whole new uh, uh, you know mix of creators. So, yep, and that's up to uh, that's up to you, the viewer. <laughs> so please please pledge for Dracula Visions because <laughs> we want to do more of these. All right, all Especially right. Especially with Thank this Gorman level. This week. <laughs> and Psycho Check especially out Psycho with Gorman. this level of creators, creative oh, talent yeah. too. Yeah. Like this is incredible. Yeah. The, you the won't hat, regret it. The it's two gonna, dozen it's gonna look beautiful creators involved. All right, folks, take care. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>